Hey, what's up, guys? This is Rafa with Rafa Racing. We're here at Lamborghini McLaren Houston, uh, where I'm taking delivery of a really special car. It's been about an 18-month process in getting this car from the design phase to now fully production delivered to Houston. It's a 765 LT Spider that I actually dedicated to Kobe Bryant, uh, my idol, one of my idols growing up and just as an adult. And the way he approached the game, the way that he focused and trained and just basically looked at the competition, studied it, and made himself better every single day. So uh, it's a special build. It's a real special dedication to me. And, uh, you know, rest in peace, Kobe. You've always been an idol to me. And looking forward to seeing the car. And then we'll do a full walkthrough here in a couple of days once the inspection of the car is done and we find a better space to kind of really showcase the car. So looking forward to doing the full walkthrough and showing you guys what this car is all about. What's up guys? We're uh, back in the Black Mamba. Uh, I've actually owned the car for a few months. Uh, we've been a bit busy with our schedule with a lot of the racing and things going on with the club and the business. So I haven't gotten a chance to actually complete the video uh, on my 765 LT Spider build, a uh, one-on-one -one build that MSO did. Uh, it's fully exposed carbon. It's my dedication to Kobe. Kobe's been one of my idols and inspirations my entire life, you know, from his playing days and me growing up to obviously his passing and the way that I see life and look at some of the interviews you miss some of the things that he was doing and saying and the way that he approached the game everybody knew he was an incredible player a dedicated player uh, but a lot of stuff behind the scenes and some of the footage that's I would say evolved ever since his you know his uh, unfortunate passing um, has really brought to life more of like what he really was and stood for and what sort of athlete and type of person I guess he was. I wanted to go ahead and dedicate a car to him and I decided that the Black Mamba fully exposed carbon 765 was gonna be sort of my dedication. The car is absolutely beautiful, insane. As I, you know, you guys all might know that 765 is just an absolute beast. Uh, 765 horsepower. McLaren actually name plated it uh, Black Mamba, which is the first time they've done that. So it's a real special car. There's a lot of special touches that we're gonna go over and highlight. So I actually did get a chance to kind of put the put, put the car to the test and push it a little bit uh, in a TV series that I'm producing called Banging Gears. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to actually enjoy the car as much just with as busy my travel schedule has been, uh, but I have taken it out for a spin a few times. You know, we're taking it for a spin today, and uh, you know, it just feels like an incredible. Uh, machine from a sitting position from the way it looks and feels uh, really happy with the result and really excited to show you guys some of the details the car has and um, and you know get you uh, opportunity to take a look at the body at the work that you know piece of art that this is and all of the details that uh, MSO added to the car um, you know there's quite a bit of details that we added with uh, snake prints with uh, some of the art that's on the car some of the challenges that they had even from being able to show as much detail as they did on exposed carbon, something that they hadn't done before. So I'm getting one of the little errors here in the display. I think the display is still throwing off this error. Um, may have to get that checked. I don't think I need to, uh, but we're getting a little display error here, but the display looks fine. So could be just a computer, maybe you just need a reboot or something. So, uh, but we're going here in Houston uh, into a park that uh, it's gonna be out in the open so we can really see the car out in the open, out in nature, but really happy with the result again and uh, just absolutely love the car. It looks pretty insane, just so much detail in the way that the light hits it. And as you move around, you see some of the movement that the snake print gives it, as well as the fully exposed carbon, just the amount of detail that goes and the amount of work that goes into getting those fibers to connect so perfectly well and 
and web each other so well. The MSO process that I had to go through was you know, pretty easy. So I decided that I wanted to essentially do this. They communicated that to MSO in the UK. They came up with sort of what their interpretation of what I wanted was. First run at what they gave me was almost what the car looks like. We did some changes, but they 100% understood what my vision was. I did a little write up of what the car would mean to me and why I wanted to do it. And so they were able to come up with what their interpretation of that was, which is pretty impressive. Very detailed, but very minimalistic at the same time. Uh, just giving it these really classy, elegant touches to it. We did decide to put just a pinstripe across the bottom on some key parts or elements of the car to outline it. Uh, we did go with fully exposed carbon across the body. And uh, in the parts where we were able to paint, we went with the graphic of the snake print on the, on the mirror covers. Uh, we did it on the hood of the car and what's pretty cool about the hood of the car too and it kind of you know it's part of the rear of the car is that it gets it gets lighter and it fades into the rest of the car so as you look from the middle of the snake prints and you get to the edges it fades out and it converts you know, you know it kind of blends right into the carbon we decided to combine the gloss carbon with the matte carbon so it gives it a nice you know, two-tone to the carbon. Uh, it doesn't look too too glossy or too gaudy or too dry from, you know, from the matte. So from being gloss around the headlight to the inner part of the headlight being matte, same as, as the bumper. So you have the front of the bumper being gloss, but the lower part of, of the actual splitter or the splitter itself being matte. So one of the special parts of the, the car itself is here in the rear. Obviously you will see how the snake prints goes from the middle part of the car in the front to the middle part of the car in the rear uh, but the wing itself is just an incredible piece it has the snake print on the top and what we did is we painted uh, snake print like the underbelly of what a snake would be uh, underneath it so again just keeping that black mamba the snake thing sort of going with 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 the car so that under part is just an incredible incredible print here. We did outline the diffuser uh, in the rear. We kind of debated whether we should do more with it or just do a little pinstripe. Decided to go to the pinstripe. I think it looks really cool. Another thing that you actually may see is the gold plate. So it has 24 karat uh, heat shield. So that was a, a, another big add-on that, that we added to the car on top of obviously a lot of the artwork that we did. It gets kind of dark in there with the way it's covered. So I think that gold just makes it you know, pop even more and you know, it gives it a lot more flair to the car. The other thing that we did do is uh, upgraded the brakes to the center brakes. I don't really intend to track the car or didn't intend to, but did end up actually putting on the track the first time I drove it. So, you know, besides that, I want to say it was like a fifteen or eighteen thousand dollar upgrade, but if you wanted to get the Senna kit at a later time, it was going to be twice as much, if not more. Kind of glad I did because I did, in fact, actually track it. Um, I'm probably not going to track it so much, just because you can't really repair or touch the paint or something like that. So if you track it, get a rock chip, um, it's probably you know not going to be something I can easily repair or repair at all. So if I get a rock chip driving around enjoying the car in town, you know, so be it. That's going to suck, but. The odds are that on track you're gonna end up catching something. I'm gonna just try try my best to keep this one off the track. So let me open this guy here, and then you know we'll we'll look in the inside. Underneath the hood of the car, there's another special touch there. One of the things that they also did is uh, did the snake print on the on the remote. So I keep the plastic on it. Haven't decided whether or when I'm gonna actually take it off, but it has MSO, it has to print on it. From what I understand, like two or three day amount of work to get this thing the way it looks with the carbon and the paint. So that was you know, a pretty special thing. I have uh, one that's orange and one that's actually in the black uh, print that matches the car. Uh, cool thing here uh, is we also did the underbelly print on the inside and um, they were able to get Daniel Ricardo, Landon Norris and Zach Brown uh, to sign it. So those are original signatures by the F1 team and uh, they were able to lacquer it and, and uh, protect it from it kind of, you know, fading or getting erased. So cool touch here. Underbody, again, it's fully exposed carbon too. So the entire car is exposed carbon. Uh, we went with this metallic uh, finish on the, uh, on the McLaren there with the logo that's actually lacquered into the hood so you can't touch it. There's, there's no aerodynamic effect there. There's actually 
no surface that you, know, that you can feel or touch. Uh, it's, it's fully smooth. All right, so we're gonna put the roof down so you can uh, better see the detail that the car has in the interior. Open up the hood. Another thing that we did was uh, have the continuation of the snake print from the top all the way to the inside of the car. So this uh, particular panel here, we ended up going with exposed carbon with the snake print on that as well. Um, so it looks very uniform and, and, and cool the way that um, it all sort of marries up. As you guys can see, once we open up the car, the interior of it is all matte carbon. This print was actually pretty standard for MSO. They've used it in other cars and it just coincidentally looked really well with the rest of the car. So I ended up keeping that mesh that kind of looks like it's a snake as well. Uh, we did put the MSO here to kind of give them credit uh, and make sure that it was a signature, you know, signature piece of the car that you could visually see that this is an MSO built car. It wasn't aftermarket built or something else. And then we also did the uh, the paddle shifters with the uh, snake print. So you'll see that underbelly or that orange print on the paddle shifts. The gas pedal has the black mamba, um, a, a snake print of a, of a black mamba uh, engraved into it. And then so does the passenger side. There's a piece of art there that they did. And it's the same design that is on the pedal engraved. And on this side, they came up with this real cool piece of art, creative way of doing it. Um, you know, you can't see it until you open the door, you know, it just looks really cool. And then the one thing that is pretty special as well is the nameplate. This one actually says Black Mamba MSO, uh, designed and built for me, Rafael Martinez. All right, cool. So that's pretty much it on the car. Uh, the exterior, we're going to take it for a drive right now. Uh, that's a full package of what MSO was able to put together. The package in total itself came out to be just as much as essentially the MSRP was. I think the standard MSRP on these were somewhere in the $450,000 range. Uh, so the full build was actually a little bit over $900,000. So almost a million dollars, 765LT. You know, I love the car. It's an exciting car to drive. It drives very much so like the Senna in the way that it delivers the power. Um, it does feel a little bit more squirrely. It doesn't have all the downforce. It looks awesome. It's a beautiful looking car. It doesn't look as, you know, like as wild as the Senna. So we'll take it for a spin and see what it sounds like and what it feels like on the road. It sound like the 600. It sounds louder and more aggressive than the 675. And something between the 675 and the Senna. That was a baby. A baby pull. But it feels a lot like the Senna. It's a popo. Yeah, just the way that it pulls, especially like mid, yeah. mid range. It's got so much boost. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Yeah, it sounds identical to the Senna, even the way like it's so like there's not much sound deadening. Like you hear everything. Yeah. Like it's pretty much race car like. But yeah, I mean, every time I downshift to the Senna, it sounds just like this. It feels. I think the Senna maybe feels more rattly because it's just a. You know, the way that it's built is different, but you step on it. I mean, it's, that is set up. Yeah, it's crazy fast. That is insanely fast. And that's not pinned, is it? Oh, no, not even. Yeah, no, I a bit of traffic, so I mean, I, would, yeah. I wasn't even close to being floor. Like, don't really have the space and time this moment. Right. It's gonna really floor it. Obviously, at the track is the ideal place. And yeah, that, that was pretty uh, dicey a few times. Get the pops. Yeah. Get the pops the downshift. Yeah, the car just feels so good. It feels like a, I would say it feels like just a baby Santa, you know, in the sense, without the arrow. But the exhaust is very similar and everything else about it. I think right now, obviously yours was more, but for half a million dollars, it's the coolest, fastest, craziest looking supercar. 
yeah, I, I agree. I don't think that anything that any other the brands where they put out competes with it from a look, like as a complete package. Yeah. But performance, look, everything, standpoint, it'll be hard to find anything that can, that can hang with it. Yeah. Obviously, you have things that are a lot more wilder looking, like the STO, obviously, it's in this price range. Yeah. Uh, but you can't compare it to it on track. All right, so we're back to the club, actually, where my uh, personal collection is going to be. We're working on doing this whole build out here. Uh, I got the SF90, the F5, obviously the 765, and some of the other cars in a different building. We'll be moving them here uh, as we finalize the space. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. I uh, got to see a lot more of the 765. Uh, we didn't have a chance to do rollers and some of the other shots that we wanted to for this particular episode, but we're going to have follow-up content on our Instagram page, um, you know, and uh, just in general going forward, you'll be able to see a lot more content. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave those below. And as always, thank you for watching. Tell your friends and your family. See you next time.